Hey everyone, it's Orca. Tonight we're going to be playing some Clan Blitz and my friend Reborn is going to join us. He's going to give us some tips. This is our first Clan Blitz rotation that he's going to be able to attend. I'm very excited for that. I'm actually about to get him on the call in just a moment. Um, please follow Reborn on his YouTube, on his Twitch, at Reborn underscore NA. Or reborn space NA on YouTube. So I'm gonna call him now. I'm very excited for what's gonna happen tonight. And I hope you are too. you this evening howdy howdy you doing well? how about yourself i'm doing really well well i'm doing at the same time i'm doing well i'm doing actually terrible <laughs> it's uh both things at once um i feel physically like trash i feel so bad i am um, just am getting over a stomach bug that lasted for oh, a few oh. days and then I also, because of that stomach bug, I've been, I was staying up very late, and so I'm very tired as well. Um, but in terms of the grind set, the mindset, <laughs> I feel great. <laughs> I feel, I feel ready to learn. I feel really, I think I actually, this is going to be a really good rotation. I think this is going to be a good one. That's cool. How's my feeling? Uh, how are you? I'm pretty good. You're pretty good. I'm just kind of vibing. Nice. That's good to know. Good to know. Actually, before we started, I actually wanted to talk about... Wow, I just realized it's almost a game five. Or it is a game five situation here. I didn't realize it until right now. Starting tough. Starting tough, yeah. Um, but before I even started... I wanted to talk a little bit about what, well, I guess I should start like saying, I feel like the past couple rotations I played, I kind of regressed in terms of improvement because I was focusing, I was very results oriented. Um, I started getting to a point where I felt that I could just easily or not easily but i could handily handle like sub 2000 lobbies and then it was kind of i kind of expected myself to just be able to just climb back up so whenever i didn't meet that expectation i think i started getting frustrated yeah, um, and i think that it just hurt my overall like the past few rotations i've had the past few videos you're gonna see on youtube even though i i have nine videos in the backlog which is bad i'm gonna upload some of them tonight for sure but um they were rough they were rough in fact even earlier today i i had i just lost 150 points just quickly six games in succession <laughs> splat zones um that was sad but i mean it's okay i mean right now i feel it's okay i, I did not feel it was okay in the moment <laughs> but uh, um I think it's a good lesson to learn. I think when, because I definitely notice it myself that like sometimes I'm like super focused and I'll play well, and then I'll get to this point where, because like right now I haven't been grinding as much, but over the last couple of these I've been playing a little bit more, um, and my powers are around like 22, 2300, and I feel like I'm better than that. Mm -hmm. Um, but. So sometimes I will go into certain rotations and depending on my mentality, I, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely go in the same way that you're feeling or like, yeah, I'll just, you know, I can just kind of steamroll these without really thinking about it too much. And, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a brutal lesson to learn. If we're not focused, <laughs> I am a 2200 player or I am a 2300 player right now. So it's like, you have to kind of accept, you know, it for what it is. And it's like, if we want to 
keep progressing and get to a point where sub 2k is like we can autopilot out or you know for my case like if i want to be able to climb 24 2500 without really having to try super hard like i have to i have to get back in the routine like there's so much stuff that i have to get back into doing regularly so mm -hmm. um yeah no that regression will definitely happen it's, a lot of it is uh just again trying to build that intuition and everything so yeah, yeah anytime that you you don't have the right mentality it can definitely come right back at you yeah yeah no i completely agree it's, and it's, it's not a fun lesson but it is a very uh healthy lesson to learn yeah it's a valuable lesson indeed um with that being said what from from the past few rotations that you've seen of me what do you think are my the number one things that i think that like are just the things i should be trying to improve on like right now i mean obviously i there's plenty of things i, I that you've mentioned already in terms of just uh not hesitating or playing more yeah. selfishly so um, i think going into this rotation i would love to see you be very um play off the objective don't get mm -hmm. baited into doing clam blitz things don't be baited to like oh i i like have to stop the the clam person or like oh i'm about to score or like i have a clam i have to go and score it like mm -hmm. i want us if we have a power clam and we're looking to score i want us to like look like we're gonna go score it and then bait the enemy team mm -hmm. like, just take it take like sag kind of like stagger step a little bit like kind of move forward a little bit like you're gonna commit and then don't commit and then just mm -hmm. kind of see how the enemy team responds you'll over time you'll start to notice that they will fall for the beat very 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 often so um mm -hmm. i think that would probably be your best lesson right now mm -hmm. is just be very comfortable not doing the objective and helping your team through that aggression through finding picks and you know that all everything that you've been doing a great job of in the other modes i just want to make sure that we're we're at that same level for for clean blitz mm, okay okay cool i'll focus on that um i do ask that if you ever see me specifically for this rotation if you see me focusing too hard on the objective please please point it out i say that because i do realize i am sleep deprived now <laughs> <I'm not laughs> yeah, really I, my mental faculties even though i am in the mindset I'm, I'm really feeling good about improving i feel really good about just this rotation i also know i'm a little physically incapable of not incapable but uh i'm mentally uh not all the way checked in <laughs> Or at least not at my 100% of my capacity. So I probably need to be reeled in a couple times. I'm, I'm taking that into account. <laughs> yeah. I'll try my best to keep you honest. I appreciate it. All right, what are we playing with here? What's the problem weapon on there? Sorry, Dynamo, my 52. And Wiper when it has stamp. And try slasher, I guess. <laughs> All of these are good picks, I guess. Try pushing in here. Just kind of everybody have a plan. Oh, I was by myself. I didn't even know. We're, we're still warming up a little bit. Yep. Alright, so I'm gonna ignore the objective here and then just go for these picks. Try to see if I can get something from. Just pincer them in. I don't see anyone though, so I guess. I don't see anyone. I guess they got it. Okay, so this wiper likes to play on the left side and the diamond likes to come over here. This is early, but yeah, a little early. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't I didn't mind the timing, I just wanted us to be set up a little bit more. Yeah, set up on that probably right. With a little bit of high ground. Yeah, yeah I'll exactly. probably do a better, better option. But if you want to pick that, I think that's fine. Oh, they baited me. That's a good bait on my part. Alright. Just because your teammates won't do it, I'd probably pick up the power plane before. It resets. Oh no. That went to lead. It's okay. It's going back. No, it's there. It's there. Oh, okay. Thanks. I mean... <laughs> okay, is that... You can try maybe throw one more time. I think everything else is fine. Switch my focus a little bit to just trying to help whatever fight they're taking. I think they're starting to get antsy. Just feeding a little bit, maybe a lot. This life is giving us a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. oh, there was a flank on the right side. Oh. This is probably. Probably gonna be it. No worries. That was a. Huh. I felt like a very mis mismatched game. That was tough. Um, if you do find yourself in those types of situations where, like, your team, like, doesn't really do anything, um. There's two ways that you can approach it. One of them is like kind of like what we were talking about in the previous rotation where like you literally just like sit in shark somewhere and you just find a clean pick and you mm -hmm. get a cap like you start your pushes off that. The alternative idea is um, just be very good with your crab and like just get, like try to use your crab to like force a pick. You know, if that dynamo's top mid or that wiper is on left like you identified, sometimes you just like you know, even if you're just like sitting on your snipe or something and just taking it really slow, eventually mm -hmm. the enemy team will push us and we can kind of like set up for like a counter attack and everything. So, mm. yeah, it, it's a tough spot. I would I wouldn't worry too much about win loss there because I don't I don't think there's a ton you could have done outside of just literally one v boring to uh, change the result there. Yeah, that was a tough game, but. Those happen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's really interesting. I think it's when when those games. It's like the when things start spiraling out of control like that. The I have to think of ways to try to. As you, see, I guess the end goal is to try to re-establish some modicum of control or some normalcy for you because i feel like all my other teammates are starting to spiral in terms of just like oh man they're, they're getting very feedy and very just trying to make forced situations and whatnot yeah definitely in those trying. spots like that's where i think going wide sometimes can help because you're probably only going to match with like one person or so mm -hmm. like if you play in like the main area like you're going to be playing the entire team but if you're sitting on like the far right side or far left side you might be able to just like find one person to to take into a fight mm. i have to think about where i'll end up after a fight too oh yeah I'm Back exposed, I remember that lesson. Okay, we can pretty 
Yeah. They have Zuka mode, though. It's not the worst I push. Yes, yeah, it's fine. They're probably gonna Zuka, like... Maybe I can actually... That was a good idea, but yeah, if we're gonna sit over there, I'd rather make sure we have a camera angle to be able to see that person pushing through. And then just trap where they're at. Still coming in though, if they can okay, stop that, nice. There's one far left. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna ignore that. I feel like 1v1 gets hit, or even... Okay, they jumped out. That's probably their intention to begin with. Looking at them. Yeah. yeah, I think in those spots you want to be thinking about clean picks. You don't have to yeah. necessarily play around mid. Like this is where I just like. Ignore the objective altogether and just like make sure it's somewhere kind of there. Because we all had like a bunch of control in there. So try to use that space to establish a good, good fold on the part of the map. Unfortunately, yeah, we're still getting a little bit baited into like different plans just because. Yeah, I'm, um, I see what you're saying, game baiting to pick up those plans and then 52 punish me. Really not focus on the objective at all. It's, it's tough. It's like a hard thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where, like, it's not that you shouldn't pick up clans, but we don't want to give away our position. Like, we don't want to overextend to go get clans. It's like, would exactly. we have pushed that cubby yeah. if... 
pull like if those clones weren't there probably not or at least mm. i'd probably want us to like push sides or something mm, yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah. Fall a little bit but i like that you didn't try to entertain fights with like the tent and everything i think any time that we can avoid that because a couple times you had to do it because they were like threatening a really big push so you know, i think those are appropriate and you did a good job using your bombs but uh but yeah, otherwise if you don't have to go for those plays we didn't and i like that mm -hmm. um yeah sometimes when you're sitting on that right side like if you get a, a pick and you can push through sometimes i think we can look for um like sharks in their base and like try to punish the people that are coming out of spawn those opportunities won't always be there but if we have a lot of paint, you should be pretty comfortable doing it. If we don't have a lot of paint, depending on your timing, you might be able to to get enough paint down to be able to like get a decent shark. But yeah. again, in those types of spots, sometimes it feels like you need to set yourself up in front of the basket for your team to score. But if you play up top and you like flank, so if you flank around the far right side, yeah, and you get behind them, like you can always drop on them later. But you can like that holding that high ground is really good because your teammates can jump to you. You can set up good crabs up there. Mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. spawn camp people that are coming out of spawn. Um, so again, this kind of just goes back to like don't feel like you have to be in a position to do objective because you can definitely on both of the maps you can like if you get picks you can start setting up the objective pretty easily mm. afterwards. So just try to be like extra extra selfish. And again, like if you if you come across different plans and stuff along the way, that's totally fine. But you'll definitely be able to win these games if you just are focused on just like slaying and stuff. Like you can trust that your teammates will do objective. Because like in that final push there, like you had one clan that you contributed to that push. Yeah. It's like your team can can muster up big pushes if they have space to do stuff. But like you set that whole play up with like a really nice crab and everything. So, um, you know. You did the hard part. They can they can pick up clans and throw them in the basket. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. As long as you make it easy for your team, they'll be able to do it without any problems. Yeah. Cool. Now this is a weapon that I've historically had a very hard time dealing with. It was just a custom blaster. I don't know how to deal with this weapon. I don't know how to deal with being point censored specifically. Um. Point sensor is gonna depend on the scenario. Sometimes we can kind of ignore that we're point censored, but usually we'll probably just play it slow. Oh, goodness. on me there. Wait, are they gonna keep pushing me? Oh, that's a bad jump. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, they're still gonna push me here. Okay. Is it safer to do this now? So tough for me if I try if I'm not aiming perfectly. Yeah, I probably like actively avoid playing top mid if they have try up because like you just can't do anything. Yeah. Is this our? No, it's too much. Okay, I'm gonna push them from here. Now they're watching me. Actually, this is still fine. Hmm, you can pressure. Yeah.
That's all good. Bye. I'm good with that play, but I, I like that we get poked out there, we back up, and then we like immediately take that space back. I like that we don't just give up that idea altogether, mm. just because one person goes, or like just because we get poked out once. Yeah, do you, do you recommend um, that I try scoring there, or like the two clams, should I have gone for that, or should I have just uh, tried um. getting picks? I would have thrown just one clam and got more information. It's hard to really say. Yeah, I'm okay throwing one in, but we, just, we need to be really quick and then get back into it. Like playing that left ledge. Oh, this is. This is not gonna work, is it? I mean, I guess I could. Mm, I, don't know. I thought that I was gonna die if I. We can try sharking under ledges. Sharking under ledges? Yeah. So like, we oh, went yeah, back. Yeah, I see. We were like, you can like, if you play left side, you can like shark under like their left ledge with their plot and everything. Just wait for them to drop. Obviously not right now because everyone's fighting, but like if there's like an opening. Like mid's good, but you can also go for like more selfish plays. Ah, why did I do that? This is panic. It's okay. That's a good play for us. This up. Yeah. I'm surprised that they came back for you. I, I like that we tried to ignore the Kraken. You could have potentially squeezed through and just started pushing the upside, but I think when we played it was fine. Yeah, see if we can jerk here. See if we have some time. Let's try to let's try to find a clean pick. Nice. That was really good. That was really, really good. Cool. Also, when you're playing against Custom Blaster, like, if the Custom Blaster is at second person, like, you always have to, like, roll into them. I'll talk about it after. Okay. Focus it. We can keep playing under the ledge. We can play by that pillar if you want to. We'll just try to chill. I don't want to move too much. So yeah, when we're playing that left side, like we were kind of like, like we we kept rolling backwards and forwards and poking on top left. Mm -hmm. That plays totally fine, but I wouldn't overstay or welcome. I think going for that poke once is probably like enough. Maybe like a second time, but anything after that, you're just asking to get picked up by another angle. Yeah. So it's like go for that play, and then you can still stay underneath. Like you can start playing like where that blue pillow is mm -hmm. under their plot. Like you can keep pushing forward that way. They can start moving toward the right side, and then you can kind of like you're almost playing like a zone defense where it's like I'm watching right side, then I'm watching left side, and I'm kind of just like bouncing back and forth between the two. And if someone drops on left, I can potentially go for that pick. Um, if someone, if my team starts fighting on the right side, like I can potentially <coughs> help, help them with those types of plays. Mm -hmm. So just keep your options open. Uh, but yeah, you can definitely shark under that ledge if they're in the, like not focusing it at all. Um, but the thing I was mentioning with Blaster is like, um, there was a fight where you got a pick on someone and then there was a range Blaster as the second person. Um, uh, we like rolled backwards to, to like, try to get distance uh, from them, but yeah, we have to like just stay, yeah, you just, you have to yeah. stay close and just try to like hope that they don't hit a direct, like try to dodge them as best you can. Yeah. Because when you get inside of the blaster, you should win the fight, but if you're, if you're like, poking at them, you're just gonna lose it. It's too easy of a fight for them to win. You just gotta find the right time to commit. Is that it, really? Whoa! Where are they? Now someone's over there. Yeah, I'll sure. probably go for shirt. Sure. Um, 
I'm missing. Oh, this is bad. No. Is he still alive? It's okay. I think we panicked a little bit. I think we could have just backed out. But, uh, mm. yeah. If we don't get those picks, it's totally fine. Don't overstress it or try to, like, overcorrect it. Or... The spots for you know, clean up and then like maybe we can maybe we can look for spawn camps. Oh, I didn't mean a peek there. That's all good. Yeah, we got stuck on the ledge. It's all good. Yeah, that's a good play. Uh, we made the thing oh, about the peekings on each side. Yeah. Uh, where are they? Are they over here? I'm not gonna die. Why did I do that? Ugh. Yeah. If we don't panic there, we we just don't die. Yeah. Okay, we'll see yeah. Let's see if I get some clams. Okay. Either clams if the, if it's open. Otherwise, go for a pick. We could have sat, like when that marked person was on the right side, like pushing through. We could have just sat where we were, where we were at, and like that person's probably gonna push in the mid. So if we're patient, like we probably get a free pick in a couple of seconds if we just chill. I don't get the idea. We were gonna get whaled, so I'm okay with us going for something. Either go for something or just back up completely to the race line. That's where I would probably go for like the pick. Play your teammates through the objective. Let's try to oh, get yeah, a yeah, yeah. I should probably just go for super far right. Mm -hmm. I also had crab. Just have yeah, crab yeah, we could set up a crab play as well. Yeah, it's a good, good look. Either way, I think coming out of that, we want to try to set up for a pick versus versus like the plans and stuff. That person knows that you're in their spawn because of the death cam, just so far. Nice. Yeah, just keep, keep going for it. Oh, they just broke our barrier. It's all good, it's all good. You just keep, keep, keep doing what you're doing. I feel probably got it. No, nah, I don't know. I feel like no, you're, 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 you single-handedly set up this counter attack. This is really good. Okay. I didn't mean. Well, actually, it's fine. I dropped. Stuck in ink. Actually, it was... wait. Nice. Yeah, I mean, you didn't have to do anything more than what you just did. Like in in their base, if you spawn camp them twice. Like, there's nothing like that's insane value. Yeah, yeah. And, like over time, it's unfortunate they got the score. Like y'all were ready to get a big push. Unfortunately, they got their score. 
that your teammates handled it because you're getting so much value in their base and eventually you get a big counter attack so mm. yeah don't don't feel like you have to to overextend yourself um if you're sitting in their base for that long um i don't think you made any mistakes there but uh but sometimes you might have to kind of assess the rest of the map and just make sure that your teammates don't need help like i don't think that they did but with the score of the match being what it was, it was like close enough to where if you don't like, <laughs> if you're not very active in their base and you're not applying a bunch of pressure, which you took pressure from the heavy edit, so you were you were doing more than enough. Um, like, you might have to like either drop behind them and look for flanks, like drop in the mid and look for flanks, or sometimes you might have to jump back. Um, you know, there there might be different plays you have to go for. To like help with the team and everything, but you, you play that perfect. Your team, your teammates took care of business, so no, no criticisms on the plays that you did, but uh, but just something to consider later on. Um, also, when you spawn kill them like that, that the first heavy edit didn't know where you were, so when you sat underneath, it was fine. But the second person that was spawning in, the, definitely knew. Uh, yeah. So just you're totally fine to play under ledge right there. Like I think you played it perfectly. I think you played it perfectly, but just keep that in mind. If you weren't already like, thinking about it. When our baskets open like that, I, I want us to probably prioritize staying alive versus kind of stab at them for the pick. Just because the longer that we stall, the, the, the basket closes. We can help our defense by just staying alive in the middle and just entertaining the fight with the enemy. Like if we can get the pick, it's great, but we don't stop the pick. That was so obvious. Uh, it's all good. I'm still not used to triple splash down at this point. I got it. Oh, that's good. Oh, I did not see that. Oh, this is gonna hurt. I see it. Oh. So I think for the most part that game was totally fine um, throughout the course of the match, and I think you were basically doing a pretty good job of 
mitigating, but yeah, they were definitely going for like a bunch of sneaky caps. So that's yeah. where trying to like get to the root source, which I know they're playing like far left and everything. Um, and like pushing from different areas. So if you can kind of sniff out like what that game plan is, um, you can potentially like shut it down start yes. under like a left ledge and just wait for them to drop and just start your push mm -hmm. with one of those picks. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think we did it. I think we played fine. Um, when our team scored, like the push was kind of fizzling out and we didn't have lead, which is like totally fine. We ended up crabbing and we got a pick. So like, I think that crab was fine. Um, but in those spots, like it's okay for us to s stay like stealthy and everything if we need to. And like, play, like just play for like a second push. But the, the crab was a good idea. It's like, it's not like a, it's just making sure which like you didn't play desperate at all, but just, you know, it's okay. It's okay to like have a push and like not take lead. And then as long as we're focusing on control, we can probably set up for another quick push after that. But you did a good job of popping crab and doing all that. You're teaming up the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Did we both have the same idea? <laughs> it's funny if so. <laughs> Yeah, on this map, people like to drop off the left side and like go for sneaky plays, so I wouldn't be surprised if the brush goes for that play later on in the match. Yeah, if we notice where the range blaster is, we can potentially look to like just shark for them specifically. Mm. Like if they're a problem, sense. like just try like if you if you know where they're at, you can like throw into a ledge that they're gonna drop from or like be ready to dash up on them at a certain point. Okay. Let's get game. Um, yeah, I thought that game was good. Cool, cool. Uh, one thing, not that it's good or bad, but it's one of those things that I just want to make sure that it's a decision that we make. Mm -hmm. But like every time that you have a power clam and you pop crab, you always throw the power clam. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's okay to like keep. The power Keep it. The crab. Mm. Like if our team already has like a pretty <laughs> healthy economy to where like okay once crab is done if we get picks like um I can go and score it because a lot of times you're gonna be able to score it anyways after so as long as your team basically has like one or two small clams to like keep the basket open like you can hold the clam and in certain spots it's actually gonna be better. Because you're going to refresh, like, the power clam, clam refreshes the timer fully. So, like, by the time you're scoring it, the timer's probably, like, 
pretty low. Lower. Yeah, it's probably usually it's probably a little bit lower. Um, it's not to say that you shouldn't ever go for it, but I just want it to be a decision. And there's definitely use cases. Like there's definitely use cases where you do want to drop it, but there's like if there isn't a good reason where like we need to drop it in this type of spot, like I'm okay with us just holding on to it for the most part. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but, that makes sense. But there's but I I'm fine with the flow. I just want it to be a, a conscious yeah, decision. Like a, conscious, that we go a decision with. that, you know, I can just base it on the, the actual planet economy of a bad thing back up. I shouldn't have chased that. Okay. But yeah. Looking at clan economy is usually a pretty pretty decent one. Yeah. Pick here. Oh, I'm dead. They have Blaster, they have Carbon, I'd probably look at one of those to bully. that spot we can probably just keep playing like keep pushing left and then get back like you can flank around into mid we don't have to like go back to the basket because there's like too okay. much enemy in me it's just too unsafe to go for that play The last two clams. Oh, really? <laughs> I didn't think it could reach me. Let's <laughs> pause, doing us pause, doing us. Ramway. Find that. Oh no, they just gave up the top. They just gave up the top too for some reason. Oh, the okay. 
fight. What's down here? That's scary, but we'll take it. <laughs> no, I, I, we were, we were in a very complex decision there on the left side, right before their push. We're like, uh -huh. I like that we weren't too passive to where we didn't go for like the fight on the left side. Like, I think, like, it's okay to, like, I know we want to set up for crab, but like, it's totally fine for us to take those fights. And I love the discipline. Like, at a certain point, it's like, okay, I just need to back up. Um, and then we got stuck underneath the Booyah Bomb, so that was really a, a very scary uh, situation. But uh, I think you played it really, really well. Um, yeah, I, th I think that game, from what I can remember, I think it was pretty good. Um, just sometimes, like, there was, during their first score, like, you ended up, like, dropping, and it was kind of like an autopilot drop. And a lot of times they're going to get punished, just, like, dropping under the basket like that. Yeah. I think there's two people still alive. We didn't have like an idea where they were. And like if we're just gonna paint, like try to find them, like just do it from high ground. From the top, do it from high ground. Yeah. yeah. So otherwise I thought that game was really, really good. I'll be back in like a minute. I need to get some water, but Okay, cool. Uh, good luck. Roller here, that's gonna be a problem. Dark Tetras might also potentially be annoying. Luna Blasters are always, at the very least, slightly annoying. Don't throw those at me. I'm not taking them. They're gonna die. Okay. I'm rotating. This boss is too hot now. Gosh. Julie's fight. I lost. Still here. Now they're going for something sneaky. Let's see if I can stop it. How do I want to use it? I'm gonna have resources. I have what is it, Caster? My bomb got one. So. Let me see if I can just use it to make sure those picks over there. Use it for a trade, which is probably not the best use case. I have to be aware of the blaster when it's on the. Watch out! Nice. That was unfortunate. Dang. Okay, we have 
with his clams here. Don't rush it, don't rush it, don't rush it. They rushed it. Don't rush it, they rushed it. That's over. Alright. Now we are down a lot. Actually, it's just. I can actually just go for this play here. I could set crab there. I didn't think they were gonna come for me so fast. How did they even get there that fast? That play was okay. I like the idea. It was unfortunate if there were two people there. Yeah. Dark composure, so good setup for another push. Oh, they actually dropped. I could have held on to that. Maybe. Be fine. Be as well. The flame spawns on this map are super generous, so. Can be a little bit more like just score whenever. Mm. I probably hold on to a single time there just to end the game, but your teammates got it. Ah, oh. that makes sense actually. It's all good. I, yeah. There's a chance that the bucket timer got a little bit awkward if we didn't score both. So mm -hmm. the more I think about it, I think we kind of got the score to there. But if the ba if the timer was a little bit different, we had, if we had more time, it's okay to hold on to one just to end the game. But yeah, generally it's okay to, like, on that map, it kind of depends on the map, like, Mahi's another one where you can get a lot of clams pretty easily. Um, but depending on, like, the Clam Blitz map, you can kind of, like, um, you can kind of just score. Like, sometimes it's good to hold on to stuff, but if, if you don't know, just, just take your coins. Take the points, yeah. But really nice job setting up crab on their uh, top of their snipe. Thanks. Um, when there was two people left, mm -hmm. it like we were focusing on the person, like the roller that was throwing, throwing the curling bomb, which is good. Um, it's like super micro, but I would probably pre-fire the ledge just because I don't want the roller to be able to drop in front and potentially find like a pick. If that makes sense. I think okay. that I'm, I might be confused on what moment exactly you're talking about. You're talking about, yeah, I don't have that. It, it, I, it's insignificant. I didn't think they would. I uh, was surprised when I started getting hits on it. Let's uh, not jump in and go for this right flank here. Super far right. right then. Whoa. That was too slow. It's bad. No, it's bad. Okay. Well, actually, I could force. I could push that. Actually. Dang it. I missed my window. Could have had a queen pick there. Yeah, I like the catch. The, the catch on that. Let me jump out. Oh, Let's see if I can get.
have plans to keep developing with this movie. Hey, DC, they were over it. We were sitting on a claim the whole time. I was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I thought I had nothing. It's all good. You might have picked one up accidentally. Uh, <laughs> that was... That was like, <laughs> you were <very> like... <laughs> just gonna wash the basket clothes? <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, I got nothing. Like, <laughs> you had one claim. I had no clue. No, that whole setup was really nice though. Up, up top right. I like that we were conscious about basket economy and timer and everything. That was good. Thanks. Um, this was mainly from the game before, but there was a moment last game where you're, you were the last one coming in. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're in a situation between fights and your team has like pretty good paint, like control, control. like, I would just get into a habit of just like looking for a shark mm, or just yeah, like, just of... be really annoying. Mm. Sometimes we don't, depending on the scenario, sometimes we can set up for craps and everything in terms of like late game in certain situations, but just randomly throughout the match, I just want to get us to get into that habit. Like if we're ever between fights, whether we're the last one up, whether we have numbers advantage, if we already have a bunch of paint, like, just try to use it. Just yeah, just shark. Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll try like, to keep that in mind this game. Yeah, <laughs> like you're not playing bad at all, but there's just like there's potential opportunities to get and more sometimes, value. Yeah, sometimes we just look a little bit like confused, and we're not fully committing on an idea. That's true. So I'd rather in those spots we just do that. See what happens. Our flank on the right side to set that up. Like oh, we ended up. Down. No. no. <laughs> Tragic. Oh well, good. We're in position. Yeah, we're in control. Yeah, th yeah this kind of spot I'm okay with us getting claims. This is like one of the few spots where I'm okay with us building claims. Oh, there they go for me. I probably pass off the power swing. <laughs> That's fine. Let him, let him figure it out. Ah, that's important. That was a good setup. Good idea. There's a chance we could have rolled that, but yeah, I could have rolled there and have gotten there faster. That's all good. straight for a uh, flank here. Yeah, at this point it's okay for them to take the lead. We just want to Dang. Do you still want the spiral? Yeah. Oh, 
accidentally dropped. Okay. Wow, that took seven hits. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely um, feeling a little we'll wait and see this rotation. up anyway. No one's gonna try dropping me here. Maybe carbon. Exactly. Oh, there they are. There they go. We can always immediately jump in those spots. That's also true. Yeah. Like, if you see that they drop on you and you don't have, like, the protection from your team, I'm okay with that. Just immediately jumping. It's okay to fight it out. But don't be afraid to jump. not have one we don't no <laughs> oh i no, thought your, i heard the sound teammate, and it was the other team yeah your teammate had one but they like i don't even think they made a mistake they just died in like an unfortunate spot that like no one could really pick it up oh. that was unfortunate because y'all had the game when he pushed that up yeah oh well that's yeah, all good um Later on in the match, um, I don't really think you did anything wrong. I think you played it fine, but um, just remember that your role in those spots are just like find a clean pick. You alleviate pressure for your team by just like finding a pick. You don't have yeah. to worry about the enemy team's power claim. You don't have to worry about like. I mean, you can use it as information to like find a pick, but don't. It felt a little bit, at the end, like we were slightly directionless. Mm, like we oh were yeah, just yeah. kind of responding to what was in front of us instead of going for a more proactive play. That's fair, yeah. But, all that being said, I think you played pretty well. Um, there's also a time where you painted underneath their plot and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, all the fighting was happening on the other side of the map. So you can paint that and then immediately go into like sharking. Like there's certain spots where you can paint and like still shark and they don't know that you're there. Mm -hmm. But it just depends on like if they're already doing something else during that time or not. So I really like the paint that we got on the under their ledge. And I was hoping that we would shark that play. right now <laughs> this is such a sloppy fight that was so sloppy <laughs> all right <you're> at risk. <laughs> nice. actually i can just go for it uh, i missed 
I misjudged the range. Okay. And now this one. I'm engaged in some silly fights with this Nautilus. It's all good, this map. It's very silly. Oh, really? That sucks. And they're still alive, too. Is this ours? No. <laughs> Bombs. Yeah, I, I didn't think that you would actually die there. I was surprised. Oh, I was a little panicky. Can I avoid the tail? Aim. Nope. Cannot. All good. So yeah, that was a weird game. Um. You played the opening really well. The fact that the enemy team scored is like not your wrongdoing. Like when you were zoning their power clam from dropping left side, and you were finding picks on the left side of the map, like you were playing your your part really well. So don't worry about the result there being negative for your team. Like mm -hmm. it out like to impact the outlook of that. You played that really well. Um, I think our biggest mistake. At the tail end of our initial score, like you have to look at that situation and just be okay with, um, with not like scoring. setting, just set yes, yeah, you'll had a really good setup for a second push that you could have led with your crab, yeah, but we got desperate to try to keep the basket open. To... Yeah, and like Clambus, people are <coughs> people get way too baited about basket being open. Mm. Like, there's almost, unless it's like the final push of the match where we're in overtime, like, there's always time for that next, um, like, that next push. Because your team, yeah, like, that makes sense. Because yeah. your team got the score a little bit premature, but that, it's fine. Um, but you need to use that time while y'all, like, while the enemy team's kind of scared of y'all scoring to, like, paint up mid, which you were doing, and, like, starting to position on the right side so you can set up for crowd. So you were doing the right thing, but we just we didn't need to overcommit to try to like score in clams. Yeah. Even if we did keep the basket open, I still don't like that play. That's fair, yeah. That makes sense. Otherwise, I think we would have had a pretty good lead if we were able to get a good crab after the basket close. Really good job <laughs> Find, finding cover halfway through there. Unfortunately, we just ran out of ran out of juice by the end of it. Yeah, but that, that fight was good. I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm dead. Good trade. I'll take that trade. Yeah. Dynamo still there? Yeah. Actually, I'll just shark here. Yeah, if Dynamo's not looking at you, let's try to find something else to do. What oh, Nautilus? No, 
Nice try. Yeah. No, I hope I was good. This is unfortunate that it didn't align for us to be able to get to, too, but... Yeah, it happens. The whole, whole idea was really good. I'm trying to look for more opportunities to shark and really pay attention on it. Yep, and like Dynamo over there is watching the left side, like that gives us an opportunity to push right side potentially. And there's someone who they're watching that though, so let me stay here. And they didn't stop it, unfortunately. That's fine, it's actually. Okay. This, this is a really bad push by them, so. I just don't want to overextend here, I feel like they're baiting me. I cannot win against this. <laughs> Do these for some reason? <laughs> That's all good. They're playing very aggressive, so we might be able to use that information against them later on. Like, they just yeah. kind of commit to everything. Okay, I'm tired of just playing here. Definitely watching them. Let's see if I can just create some chaos. And... Wait, I don't know where they are. I thought they would come chase me, but they did not. Yeah. They ended up three down. Oh, really? Yeah, I'll just take this then. Ah, I can reach that. The, I love the quick roll in and then back behind cover. That was so clean. We got like a little bit of chip. But I don't think we ever go for that fight. We just never win that. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's an uncomfortable spot, but we just have to be comfortable sitting there. And if we have to drop, we can drop. Otherwise, we play that so well. Unfortunate, but like, I'll take trades. Yeah, animals. take trades. I don't any time. Oh, I'm dead. This might be a push for them. Oh yeah. Unless my teammates can clutch it out. Okay. Okay. okay, it's about to be like a. We're just gonna try our best to yeah. respawn. Just can't, like we can, we can KO with one push. Oh, it's time over there. Gosh. Sure. We only need one clan. That's, that's fine. I knew they were doing that. I knew that they were doing that. I just didn't know where they were. Okay, I got one. I should have, uh. I knew they were baiting me to do it to do that. I just. I don't know. I thought I could. That would work out somehow. This game's still definitely. Oh, okay, like, this is still. Okay, where is the power clam? We don't have any clams. We don't have any clams anymore. <laughs> hey, what happened to the power clam? Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Um. I do think for the most of the middle of the match, like, we didn't necessarily do anything wrong, but we didn't really, like, do anything productive. Mm. The game was just kind of happening around us, and I would have liked to seen us be a little, like, come up with like more creative ideas to like look for picks like if we're gonna be playing a little bit slower and painting and stuff like we have to be looking for like a crab idea you know mm -hmm. but if we're gonna be playing like again it's just like two options and we just want to hard commit to one or the other like either we play like more controlly where we're poking bombs at them and we're just painting and holding space and then the end goal is to set up for a good crab or we, you know, sometimes we do have to paint a little bit, even if we want to shark, because we need to set, give ourselves opportunities. So, like, it doesn't mean that you, like, can't paint, but I want us to be a little bit more... Like, that play that we went for on the knob, I really like that. Um, I, I want us to be a little bit more aggressive. And so, like, when you're playing against Dynamo, like, if, you're, if Dynamo's watching the enemy team, like, that is a note for you of, like, okay, like, maybe, like let me set up a crab on the other side of the map. If, if they're distracted on one side of the map, let's just set up on the other side. Okay. I 
just don't want the matches to like happen and we don't really have a big part of it. That's fair. Also, for under the basket and everything, like under the enemy team's basket, you can ping like this way to kind of like let your team know that like, hey, I can push now. Sometimes it's helpful. Though. It's not really a big deal. Yeah, this is like a spot where the fact that your mark doesn't really matter. Oh. It's fine, it's fine. Like in those spots where there's a ton of chaos and your team's already fighting, like it doesn't really matter that your mark. The jump out was, was good, though. I like the preemptive jump out. It's all good, we set up for the counter. Uh, I love the idea. It was unfortunate we didn't get the picks. Our team still got good value because we took some pressure away. Great set. But that whole play was really nice. There's there's a good chance that we get a double there. And potentially KO. So. Really nice setup. Just keep doing this. Sure. Actually, I will see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're vibing. I just gotta set up for the, the cam. Hopefully our team can do something that. there. It feels that bad dying in the spot, but like a double is more than enough. Why do they keep getting specials? I see you now. Wow, we are. Dang, we just can't mount anything. This. Is actually very dangerous right now. This is kind of scary. Um.
can try. Um, uh, that was a weird game. Um, cause yeah, there's a point where yeah they just kept like having special advantage. We were kind of just like stuck in the mid. Like ideally in those spots, like we can tr at some point try to find like an opportunity to like get a clean pick. But I don't know. I thought you played it like pretty well, honestly. Like you're holding, you were eating a lot of pressure on the right side. Like you're constantly like dealing with like two plus people and like weaving in picks throughout all of that. So honestly, yeah, I I think that's just kind of team def. I think you actually played that like pretty well. Um, the only thing is like when we get those picks, I think there's a world where we can potentially try a, a little bit harder to start setting up a push. Hmm. Because, like, even though we had lead, like, like you said, like, that whole spot felt very uncomfortable. Um, so, those are the types of spots where, like, maybe we want to be a little bit more, I don't think desperate's the right word, but be a little bit more uh, determined to, like, set up a push if we can. Like, we don't How need do the force. Do but, um, I don't know. Like, if, if right side... So, like, you were setting up right side, if if they end up, like, if their whole team is, like, holding their right side, maybe you just rotate left, and, like, maybe make a play left. Like, you could, like, drop left side if you wanted to, um, you could play underneath, like, their left, uh, like, that bunker, basically, and um, you could play around that area if you wanted to, but sometimes you just need, like, a new perspective on the map, because we were kind of just, like, stuck where we were at playing right side so if we get stuck on one side we just try the other side see if that changes anything like ideally you can look at the enemy team's comp and find like a matchup you like oh my god also so yeah i don't think we need to commit to the ball there i think we sit in mid and wait for the enemy team to poke out because our our team like is that we have bodies between the ball and the basket, so we don't have to like, immediately dash to it. That was a really good play. Like we could have gone for that exact type of play in that previous setup. It's good info for the future. If you find yourself in that situation against the Expo, you double back on them and just roll into them. They're, they're, they're very aggressive. Speaking of, it's not the roller here. Scary, but that was sick. <laughs> I love the expo punish. Um, I don't mind the fights that we're going for in mid, but we can also like try to play a little bit wider and try to like find an isolated fight. Alrighty. Love that we're punishing the expo. Play that well. Don't worry about the fact that they got the jump. That's not on me. That's a spot where if we know rollers on the right side, maybe we rotate left side. Yeah, I knew it was on the right. Unless we have like a play that we can go for. Oh, 
Wait, I got distracted. <laughs> I just went for the expo earlier a little bit. It's definitely a fight you can explore, that's for sure. Just try to add pressure here. Oh, I'm set up for another push. I'm so. Oh, wow. They jumped out. Wow. <laughs> I was lucky. Okay, there's a roller there. Just a lot of chaos happening. Sometimes we can hide him amidst all the chaos. Yeah, slow down for myself. It's a tough game. I think we played. Uh, I, don't know, I thought we played really, really well, honestly. Like, I think you tried your best to to look for opportunities across like most of the map. And unfortunately, it's like they either get a ton of pain on one side, or you have to deal with roller playing very passive on the other side. Like your team didn't have enough pain control for you to really be able to like properly punish the roller. So I, I, again, I thought you did like a like literal like perfect job just like playing zone against the the roller. Like we didn't have the pain to be able to like go for an aggressive play unless we went for something desperate. So which I, I don't think we go for a desperate play there. So I just I really like the way that we play that. Um, there weren't a ton of opportunities for us to like do stuff honestly. Um, Maybe we could have like pushed a little bit with our teammates specials, but I don't think they really gave us a lot of great opportunities. Like one of the, one of our yeah one of our T Tex tri strikes like they threw them, but like they didn't really they didn't throw them in a way for us to do anything with them. Mm. Like if we were gonna push on it, we still had to like worry about the ruler. So it's like, I don't know. I I think you literally like did your best in those spots. I feel pretty good about that oh, action. I don't like being in that situation versus the Xbox. Mm -hmm. Yeah, against this calm, maybe we can play top mid a little bit more and look to potentially drop on them. Three hammers. <laughs> okay. I have all the annoying specials. And they're just, I see the gameplay here. Does this work? test that out. I'm going to be dealing with Hammer all game. So I think this game, probably aggressively collecting clams before they can get clams. Because all they're going to do is like try to get clams as fast as they can. And then um, and then Hammer to base. So if I can't get the pick, I can just get clams. Before they can. 
They really don't have a power. They do have a power now, though. My counter push here. I have close to eight clams. Let me just. Hmm. <coughs> oh, gosh, this is annoying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hammer. Okay, nice. We have six. <gasps> Get it. What? This is a cheese call. Let me just try to get six of it again. Where's that going to? Back there. I'm try standing over. Wow. He score one. Are you serious? That was a silly game. Reborn, are you there? Hello? Ah, shoot, did we get disconnected or something? Wait, let me check my Discord real quick. Hello? Wait, join call. Hello? Oh, my, bad. my, uh, my internet died, apparently. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I thought your like... stream froze, and then I'm like, wait, I can't do anything on my computer right now. <laughs> oh, man. Because <laughs> it just oh, went no. silent, and I was like, I guess you're really just trying to make me go <laughs> by myself here. <laughs> how did you end up? <laughs> wait, how did I end up? This was such a weird game. It, it was three stamps and one splashdown, and they were just trying to rush... They're just playing for Sam mm -hmm. and playing, trying to rush to basket. So each team, both sides, were just rushing to basket back and forth, and then we mm -hmm. won the very last. We won in overtime, actually. It was silly. It was a very silly Eesh. game. Nice. <laughs> it was, it was nice, but it was silly. 
it was probably the silliest game of tonight, honestly. <laughs> Alright. You see my screen again? Um, not yet. No? Oh, let me. It says sharing your. Oh, wait, no, no, no. You're good, you're good, you're good. Okay, cool. I. My brain is not functioning. It's all good. Here we go. Um, yeah, I don't, know, I don't remember too much of Lost Game, but I was saying before, though, like, because they're comp, like, they didn't really have any rulers or anything, like, that we can probably, like, play up top and, like, drop on them potentially. <laughs> just because they don't have a lot of good sloshing weapons. They did have, like, the Explo, but that's, like, a little bit manageable. Like, if it's just Explo. Mm, I see. But I think you played it well. Wait, you saw the game? Or you saw part of it? I, I, I only saw, like, the very, very beginning. Okay. It was, like, the first 30 seconds and then I the see Really? Okay. I'm giving that up because I do not fight 52 alone. Gosh, of course, I was right in the middle of the open. Uh, I am the 52, got that pick, and they're up the score. Let me just stay up here if I can. Still very early, so we can definitely. Wait, no, there's still someone here. Where are they scoring from? Oh, never mind. I, I thought I heard the sound when they were scoring from. I'm playing a little too overt. Okay, they're trying to hold right side over there. I'm saying of a bubble over there. Let's see if I can get some clams. Or just help him. They broke our barrier. Where are they? Did we even get a pick? Like. to them. If I get some clams, I'll jump. Oh, they gave it up. Reborn, are you there? Or am I talking to myself yeah, again? Yeah, no, 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 you're good. Okay. You're good. Up. And none of my teammates were there, I didn't know. Dang. Would score if I really wanted to. Oh no. No, I no. Squadrons get more range. Actually, 
first time looking at the comp. Okay. I can set a crab here. One, one good for There's a beacon. I heard a beacon. They just need one to. They just need. Okay. I can't. Oh, my wrist is completely to the side. I can't. Oh my gosh. You should have seen my wrist for that one. Okay. I knew there was someone shark in there. They can get it. <gasps> we didn't have a power clam. We didn't have a power oh. clam. I've lost three times to that. I have to remember that now. That's like a big thing. Yeah, teammates should be doing a little bit of a better job of that, not gonna lie, but a little, little unfortunate. Um, one thing I did want to bring up, like early on in that game, Sometimes when there's like, like there's one person left on the enemy team and they like score like a rogue, like random clam and stuff, like at our basket, it's like the, our basket's open, but like basically the push is over, but then the enemy team has like one person that like randomly keeps the basket open with like a single clam or like two clams or so. Mm -hmm. um, in those situations, we have to evaluate if it's worth it or not to to go help with that, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. we don't always need to, like, help in those types of situations. Because ideally, like, your teammates can deal with it. And while you're still up in front and still being aggressive, like, you can use that time to, like, find a pick or something mm. yeah it was i mean so that's always mm -hmm. so don't yo yeah i was gonna say don't feel like you have to put the burden of responsibility on you don't like play defense there because like if you're running halfway across the map like realistically your team probably will be able to like deal with it by the time you get back over there and there's probably better things for you to be able to do instead of like trying to trying to do that so it's not like our play was bad by any means but it's just something to to keep in mind where it just i want it to be an active decision and it feels like we're we're getting baited into like coming back for all of that and there's a lot of scenarios where it's just actively better for us not to even worry about it Just if we're, uh, uh -huh. I was gonna say because if, if we're on their side of the map, like that's like pretty. Those are like precious moments that we don't want to just give away for free. Mm. Like there's gonna be certain situations where we definitely need to like double back. But I don't think that's one of them. What were you gonna say? Ah. Uh... What was I gonna say? I was gonna say. I forgot. <laughs> I think it was along the lines of like, uh, I was just gonna probably ask what the metrics were of what, what would make that deciding factor for me. Um, I would say you would need a very, very good reason to double back. I'd probably say 80 to 90 percent of the percent of the time, like you. Just don't worry about it. Mm. Okay. Really in, like very specific circumstances where, like, if for some reason like the enemy team gets a bunch of jumps back, and then like only if it goes like completely terrible, that you would need to to like help in that kind of situation. Otherwise, just, yeah. 
Yeah, just like keep keep doing what you're doing on the aggressive front, and just trust that your teammates are gonna like do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And if like sometimes they won't, and we just have to be comfortable with like that outcome happening sometimes. Yeah, that makes sense. It just goes back to, like, I think a lot of this rotation, like, I think we've played some really good games. I, I'm sad that we haven't gotten rewarded as much as we probably should have been from these games. Mm. In terms of, like, the, the net results. But I would be very happy with your performance this, uh, this series. Definitely a couple of, like, teams that I think we can definitely work on next Clan Blitz rotation specifically, but let's try to try to finish strong. Dastardly right. range lawsuit. Yes, this is dastardly range. <laughs> there it is. It shows itself. Whoa. Yeah, be careful turning your back to the enemy team, but I love that idea against the... Whoa! Yeah. Okay. I jumped somewhere else. There's a range blaster on me. Let me just see how many I can get in. I'm gonna die. Not the most elegant play, but I'm okay. With it. <laughs> I'm okay. With it. I just <laughs> really think I was gonna live that, and I had seven clams, and I was like, I, I'm up. No, <laughs> I, un I, I understand. Yeah. As much as I criticize scoring randomly, I still have moments where I just have to stick the points in, and that's a spot I'm uncomfortable with that outcome. Oh, is there? Something's wrong here. Actually, I'm gonna go for this one here. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. Yes, they can just rotate. That is a thing. Range Blaster is dead now. I'm gonna try to see if I can go for a long flank and just pull attention here. Bring all this up. Actually, let me back up here. Okay, well, let them burn that. Terrifying, they could have killed me three times there, <laughs> like or twice. <laughs> they just didn't even shoot. Oh, nice. Where is it? I don't know where they are. I keep forgetting about that. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Just get up. It's like clean for the rest of the match. I'm just going to ignore whoever is there. Huh? The stampers. I'm gonna lie. 
Yeah. Let me paint this just to make sure there's no one shark insane this way, this way. Definitely a rotation. That was, <laughs> that was there's a, a lot that uh that happened there. <laughs> I would say overall a lot of good things, but there's definitely some some moments. Some of them are outside yeah. of our control, so I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be too too critical. The biggest thing is to make sure you have a power claim at the end of the game. <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely a really good lesson. Based off of everything that we ended up seeing. Oh yeah, this is probably one rotation in which I lost that way the most. <coughs> yeah. Usually people are good with it, but yeah, I think this is definitely one of those scenarios where our teammates are going to be hit or miss with like helping out with those types of things. So yeah, I would I'd probably say like within the last like. It depends on how the game's going, but sometimes it'll it'll be like um, what am I trying to say? Um, usually, I'd say within like the last forty seconds is like pl plenty of time to to make one. Sometimes, if it's like a minute left, you might as well go ahead and build it. Um, and sometimes you can do it in like even less time. Ideally, our teammates would be able to, uh, would be able to, like, help and do that role, but, uh, yeah, sometimes we just have to do it, just because our teammates aren't thinking that far ahead. There's a lot of comp players that, like, miss out on that type of situation and lose that way a lot of times, so... Yeah, if you can think about it ahead of time, I'm okay with us taking the last minute to just make sure we have a power clam if we don't have like a pity clam and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, how, how did you feel about the rotation? I know I guess it's like the first time that you've played clam blitz in quite a while. Yeah, um, I think that overall I played pretty, I played pretty well. I don't think I played too bad, honestly. I felt like, um, like the thing I'm trying to get better at more is, is sharking. <laughs> number one, thing. I just play really overt. I, I'm like number one popular target almost all the time because I just, I'm always out there, <laughs> you know? Yeah. No, I think that's a really good segue into one of my biggest points that I saw, where I think. I think there's a lot of scenarios where we kind of found ourselves just being like a weird support role instead of being more aggressive. Um, and it was like certain times, I think one of the biggest examples is like those situations where like, you know, there's that random person at our basket and then we're halfway across the map setting up for an aggressive play. And then we just like stop everything we're doing to like try to deal with that person. And like most times by the time we got over there, like we didn't really get any value. 
So it's like, mm. just, just let your teammates do it. Sometimes they're going to fail you, but I'd much rather... Like, more often, like on average, you're going to get more value just being aggressive and continuing your play. Uh, but if you do notice, like if you are trying to like set up a play and you notice within like the first five or seven seconds that you don't see anybody, like there's a chance that their whole team jumped. And like if their whole team jumps and it's like, okay, now I gotta I'm go kind of useless yeah. over here. Yeah. yeah. And, but unless there's something like that crazy happening, I would just keep keep the course. Um, mm. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's tough. I think there's definitely some times, I think that one game on humpback when we were playing against a roller like a v roller and then we we're playing against an explo and like we played like a real like one of the best games like in terms of just like playing clean like i think that game was like super clean from us but we just like didn't really have any like aggressive plays and it i like i think that was more of an extreme example like i don't know what we could have done in that game specifically but there was like probably like a minute and a half to two minutes of the match where we were just kind of like sitting in mid and we were just like absorbing a bunch of pressure which is like good but sometimes when i forgot what our comp was for that game specifically but uh i can probably go back and see if you want to uh yeah it might it might help in terms of context it's not the biggest deal but uh yeah it might not be a bad idea to, to take a look at it was it the Is it this one? Uh yeah, one second. I think because yeah, they had like a T Tech and stuff. Yeah, that was definitely it. Um so that's the comp there. Yeah, so our comp was because like T Tech was kind of, like you're kinda of playing like the T Tech's role in a way. Where they're just kinda of, like sitting in mid and just like like eventually they'll get specials and they can help with that. Um, yeah, I don't know the way the Octobrush played, so, but it's kind of like, Octobrush should have been a little bit more aggressive and T-Tech could have been aggressive, but you're kind of the only aggressive role, or like, from your perspective, I wouldn't trust my teammates to be the ones that are going aggressive unless they've like proven otherwise throughout the match, mm -hmm. so at a certain point, like, like you're getting good value. But it's unfortunate that like just with the team that we have, like our game plan, like throughout all that push at a certain point, something in your brain, and I, I think you like vocalize it during the moment, but there should be something in our head that's like this, this isn't like getting us anywhere, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I'm getting picks, but like, cause you were meant, and part of it again, like they were just like, I don't know if, I guess they had more pity clams. So maybe they were just like winning. Uh, winning special advantage through that but they were just like vomiting out specials left and right but there should oh, be a that certain was a moment C junior game wasn't it yeah. uh but yeah that might have been a different game no it was during that match but yeah there was another match as well with the junior because yeah i do remember the junior when you said that specifically but it was, it was a similar type of setup where like the enemy team had a bunch of pain like we yeah. we didn't really have a way that we could like progress yeah and, I, and when you find yourself in those situations I don't, because I think sometimes, and again, this is like, this happens all the time, like with teams that like I've played with and stuff, where people just, they kind of just like go with the flow, and you don't want to go with the flow <laughs> in those situations because yeah. <laughs> the flow is like not gonna like progress you closer to your goal. Mm -hmm. So have to break like, it up somehow. Exactly. Yeah, that's. I think it, it's a little bit more complex because there isn't like a great oh just do this kind of thing but that that's where like how we've been talking in some of these we're like okay we, like, at certain points like we just like slow it down and just like look for those clean picks mm -hmm. i think in that game specifically you, ha you had your hands tied like i don't think there was a lot of great ways that we could have gone for something maybe you could play like very far left and far right and like maybe go for like a weird crab play or maybe you can like drop on them but you would have had to have dropped on that. Ugh, yeah, that's weird. The way that map layout is, like, you'd almost have to take... Because, like, on that map layout, you can take the railing in your base to, like, top left. The top left. Like, that far left side. Like, it, that's such a weird play. But I think you almost, like, do that 
to avoid having to take the matchup against the roller and just try to be able to dive the explo. Mm. But that's why it's good to like um that's why it's good to kind of like think about that stuff ahead of time just so yeah. that or like you you have that cutoff point where it's like okay i need to like come up with something different like whatever we're doing now is like not not working <laughs> yeah and so that's the point where i want you to be in your future sets or like and this could be for all modes but i think it happens a lot in clan blitz because it feels a lot more dynamic than sometimes it actually ends up being um where it's like oh like there's stuff happening so you know eventually something might happen but if it isn't happening as the dualies like you have the ability to like put matters into your own hands and sometimes you put matters into your own hands and you just feed up a storm and then like you're, you lose extra hard <laughs> but i'd much rather you go for a play and lose extra hard than like go with the flow and just slowly like wither away throughout the rest yeah. of the match. like put up a fighting chance uh, ultimately mm. um yeah so that, that's kind of like that's one of the points and again like those moments where we can avoid dealing with the like dealing with the objective like i think we can do that um i think you you had a good balance but i still think like you're slightly more worried about the objective than you need to be but it's pretty close like you don't need to change plans altogether but there are definitely moments where like i think we can be we can still practice being a little bit more selfish in those spots um but we had a lot of really nice holds on like the right side of a uh, humpback and everything and we had a, a, a lot of nice like setups and plays uh, shoot there's one other one other thing at least that i wanted to say uh, i'm trying to think if you had anything else feel free to mm. fill the air while i try to remember okay Yeah, I think I think being um, figuring out how what, like I I'm trying to figure out what the best way or how to go about playing playing selfishly in in like a what went actually let me let me change the thing I want to say the opening of each game is something I'm really I think I have the opening on Scorch Gorge. Like, I like my opening on Scorch Gorge. I don't necessarily like my opening on Huntback. I feel like it's still like, I die probably 65 to 70% of the time and accomplish nothing versus like, on Scorch Gorge, I get pretty, pretty good value with my opening. I'm trying to figure out like a better Dude. opening on, on Huntback. Yeah, I think on Humpback, like, sometimes we just need to play a little bit wider. I know there's a couple of openings where we play, like, super, like farther left than we normally... Because sometimes we just play, like, between middle and, like, the pit area around mid. Mm -hmm. the basically, that's around mid. Um, yeah. And we, like, it would just be, like, awkward positions. But sometimes we play closer to the pits versus playing closer to mid. And we'd find, like, these really nice side angles on the people that are... On the like on the enemy team that were like sharking behind middle but mm -hmm. comeback's a weird map there isn't like i don't think there's like a perfect setup but i do think that if we're gonna play middle we want to play it a lot slower but i think there's also opportunities for us to be a little bit wider on like the map and stuff maybe playing super far right at the beginning or is that too yeah. risky um like just I going straight for the right flank at the very beginning i mean you could go for it i don't know I, i'd try it like i that map feels like one of those maps where like depending on the match like depending on the weapons that you see it kind of like really changes the way that you want to approach it yeah that's true because there's certain weapons, like if you're playing against a bunch of shooters and stuff, like you probably can outrange them, like if you just play wider around mid. If you're playing against certain backlines, obviously like playing those really wide, like that right drop might be a little bit awkward just because they're going to punish you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's ways that we can also just like kind of think about using our bombs 
and like can we displace the enemy in a way that we can like punish potentially mm -hmm. um, like we throw a bomb in a certain area get them to move somewhere else and then we like catch them as they're like repositioning but yeah i don't know it's tough yeah is, i will say that's one thing tough. i'm thinking about on on humpback is because i the i see Klotaji always go like that right mid and play by the cubby yeah. i mean but there is not really a cubby on clam blades yeah I, yeah i'd be interested watching them from because I'd be a little bit surprised if they were playing, like, in the middle. Because I think we were playing a little bit too, like... Not even... The, it's not like we were playing too central. We were just playing, like, between middle and... Like, we were just playing between, like, cover on both sides. And it was, like, kind of awkward where we'd get punished by a lot of weapons. Because we were just, like, sitting out in the open. Mm -hmm. But I'd have, I'd have to look at the, the POVs that you were watching. Because, yeah, different mode might potentially make things a little bit different. I don't know. I don't think our openings are bad, but but yeah, I, I definitely think I, I like. I think we can definitely reevaluate them and potentially come up with different ideas in different scenarios, for sure. Um, yeah. Ah, sure. Yeah, I do not remember what I was gonna gonna say. Um, I guess while I'm thinking about it, like. There's certain spots, and again, this is like not just clan blitz. Um, like there's there's certain times, and we talked about it on some of the Scorch games, where like we can paint and go into a shark. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's kind of just understanding like where the focus of the match. Because like from your perspective, I, like I don't know the best way to describe it, but like I can kind of usually feel and it's not 100 percent of the time but i'd probably say like 80 90 percent of the time like you kind of know where the enemy team's like like Generally on average sense. yeah where the majority of their focus is actually being put on and if we like if we always keep that in mind and a lot of times like if, we're, if they're fighting our teammates usually it's just over there but um but if we can keep that in mind, like, we can be very noisy. Like, we can get away with plays if the focus isn't around us that we shouldn't be able to get away with. Mm -hmm. But we need to go for those plays because it's, like, they're good plays. But, like, it, it feels awkward because, like, we shouldn't be able to get away <laughs> with, like, just <laughs> painting under their ledge and then just sharking it. But, like, if they don't have people over there, if they're preoccupied with something else, like, we take that opening every day of the week. Mm. Um, and I think a couple of times on Humpback, when we were like playing the enemy team's right side and we were kind of setting up over there, sometimes we were a little bit slow with just like painting. Like we were just like, just kind of like mindlessly like painting. And not, this isn't not mindlessly like derogatory, mm -hmm. but like we're, we're, we were just like very slowly like lackadaisical. Like we're just kind of painting. And a lot of times mm -hmm. it's because we were getting crab. But um, it, again, this is like, it depends on the scenario where like I, I want to make sure that it's like a deliberate decision. We didn't do it every single time. Like I don't think it's an autopilot decision from you. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we'd get on the right side and we would like overly paint where we're like literally putting everything our color. And <laughs> yeah. sometimes we could be like, there's a balance where we could paint a little bit less and like do something more aggressive, like faster. Mm -hmm. But it depends yeah. on the scenario. Cause like if, if you have like, a mid range or a long range like if, if they have like expo like s sitting back and just poking at you or if they had like a um like heavy edit or something it's like we don't really want to like go for a play like there's certain spots where it's like i'm okay with us painting and just sitting there and painting all day because like yeah if we get a crab at some point like we, we're, we're good to stall until we get crab like if they're not going to push us like the only way that we get an advantage over here is to like pop the crab mm -hmm. so there's times where that that play is totally fine but there were certain moments where i think we could probably be a little bit more like we could still be thinking about the crab play but if there's enough space ahead of us like as we're painting ourselves forward like that is like pressure for our crab 
And there's like there's certain spots over time where like you can say like you can aggressively like paint forward and know that you're not at risk of like taking of, like there's no risk of you like actually like going down. Yeah, like, sometimes you have to be comfortable like moving mm -hmm. and not that you never do it, but like there's sometimes and I a lot of people struggle with this concept, but I think you would actually get it better than most people. Um, but th there's definitely opportunities for you to be able to, like, continue moving forward, but literally there's zero risk of you, like, dying. Or, like, very low. Like, less than, like, 5% of you, like, potentially getting picked. Mm. And when we find those moments, like, even if we do want to paint, even if our angle is just to paint, sometimes we can just take space because it's just there for us to take. And I'd rather us be, you know, like, in, in certain spots, if we go too far forward and it's not safe for us to paint and move forward anymore, we can always go back. Yeah. But I don't want us to just sit back and not take mm -hmm. the space. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be opportunities every so, like, maybe one out of four or five times, like, you taking that space actually leads to something different than just sitting back and painting. But that still is 20% of the time where we're getting more value. So we, we want to set up those situations and see what happens. Mm. But it, I don't, I, again, I don't think it's like a continual issue or anything, but it was something I noticed. Uh, the other thing, and I guess I think this, I remember thinking this at some point in the rotation, so I guess this is probably the thing that I was thinking about before. Um, mm -hmm. But we need to be, keep working on our consistency about like the angle and like, our camera angle and like the information that we're getting like with our camera like mm -hmm. there was one part early in the rotation where um i forgot which weapon it was but someone like pushed us on scorch and it should have been a good play for us but like we didn't see them until they like pushed us i don't remember what happened as the result of it but, like we knew they were over there but we didn't know the exact timing because we weren't like looking at it and there's a lot of little moments in the match where, like, we could be doing a better job with our camera. I think in this rotation, it happened a lot when we were playing on higher ground, whether we were, like, on our ledge and, like, looking under our ledge, or if we were just, like, I don't like, in our bunker. I guess it's just, yeah, like, on top of ledges and people are underneath the ledge. And, like, we need to be a little bit more consistent about, like, just getting all of that information. Like, there's a lot of information that could be really important to us. Sometimes you don't always use it, but it could be really important, and we're just not looking for it consistently. Yeah. Sometimes we're really good about it, but there's times where we're moving around, and it's like, if we just like knew what was happening underneath us, and you could get that information very safely, but if we were just, like, looking for it, we could pot like we potentially have, like, a really good play on our hands. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's a little bit more of a general thing, but I think I remember mentioning it like a long time ago, um, and you've gotten way better at it, but I, I do think that we can probably work on it a little bit more. Does that make sense, what I'm saying? Of like getting, like using your camera like, yeah, while exactly. you're on ledges to like, you know, if there's someone swimming underneath you, or if there's some, you know, if you're trying to keep track of, because in some of those matches, it's like, okay, where's the roller? Where's the blaster? Where's you know different people on the map um and there's some times where we just like don't have that information or there's a couple of times where there are people like playing underneath our ledge and i i think you like didn't potentially know that they were there there's one spot there's one moment in particular i'm thinking about where like i think like we knew like i could see with your camera that like there was someone that was playing underneath our ledge and i think mm -hmm. the basket was open then um but like we didn't react to it which makes me believe that you probably didn't know that they were there um but i think if we're a little bit more conscious of our camera like we're also going to be more aware as a consequence because we're like actively yeah no that's it. actually a really good reminder i mean i know i know exactly what you're talking about yeah um i just haven't been i forgot about practicing that actually <laughs> so yeah, like, thank you, you for reminding me about that uh, you've gotten you've gotten way better at it but yeah it's just it's just continuing to build the consistency because yeah. there's like most moments it's totally fine but there's some moments we can be a little bit better and like mm -hmm. when we're playing in spots where we're going to be sharking for a while or if we're um 
you know, those moments where we do have to play defense and stuff on Clan Blitz when the basket's open and we have to like drop on them, you know, we want to try to get all the information we can before we actually commit to the drop. Yeah. That's um, fair, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, that's probably one of the bigger things. And then the other big thing is kind of just like, like with Clan Blitz, like don't, don't always commit to like the objective kind of when i said going into the rotation where it's like don't get baited by the objective and try to use the objective as bait but to provide some specific examples um like there was a couple times where we were like we were in mid and we were just like over commit to someone on the far side of the map there was a moment in humpback that i remember um where there was someone like on our far left with a power clam and we were sitting in mid and we like overextended like crazy i think we ended up getting the pick but we got like quickly traded after mm -hmm. but if we just like chilled in mid like there because like sometimes it's okay for people to like exist like even if yeah. they have power claim it's like if that person tries to move forward like your teammates are there whether they defend it or not like if they don't defend it that's on them it's not really like your fault um, but don't feel like you have to like over for it to... yeah it, i remember exactly the, same... the moment you're talking yeah. about and it's the exact same thing what I was mentioning of like if they're if that final person under our basket scores a random power clam, sometimes you have to like take a second, make sure yes. the team isn't jumping to them, but like let your team deal with it. Exactly. It's good that it's good that you're aware that that happened and you want to help, but don't put it on yourself. Like oh, I'm aware of this. You so have I need to. to commit to I it. have to be the one personally deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Exactly. You gotta push your own agenda. Yeah, because realistically, in those types of situations, if they keep the basket open, if you're sharking, the enemy team is going to, like, overcommit. Like, they're going to be coming out of their spawn, and they might just, like, hold forward through mid if they think it's safe, because mm -hmm. that basket's still open. And, so, like, sometimes those opportunities, they feel bad for you, but more often than not, it actually has... It, it amounts to your team, having a or, like, push. you specifically, yeah, having a free pick like on your hands and i definitely want you to uh to take advantage of those types of plays that whole ordeal of clean picks like when you're in good spots it has to be something very 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 crucial to pull you away from that. exactly exactly you so that's the big already. thing that is yeah. something that they definitely go hand in hand with the aggressive stuff of like just making sure that we we're, we're getting all the information um, sometimes it's just camera manipulation where we're, we're in a good position and we just need to manipulate the camera a little bit better. But sometimes it's the fact that the camera, like, or, like our positioning needs to be better so we get more value from the camera. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes we have to position like closer to a ledge. Uh, like if we think about humpback, if we're pushing their right side, like instead of like if we're playing directly on that cover to like swing into their base from the right side like mm -hmm. we can see everyone coming out of spawn we can see anyone that would be pushing us and so like in certain spots you want to play really close to the cover because if you play too far back like you don't, don't know the information they're actually until they us. drop on me yeah so long story short i think th those are the two things that i would probably take from it um is just continue to look f for the, the greedy plays and like you know if your team is looking for an opportunity try to find that opportunity from the dually perspective by sharking for a pick or you know playing wider on the map and like don't if the enemy team has power clams like sometimes you have to just be okay with them like holding it and just trust that your teammates are gonna like like as long as you're not taking too long doing whatever it is that you're doing like you have to trust during that time your teammates can deal with it because if you overcommit to defending and just like holding mid and making sure that that person doesn't score like like we saw in a lot of these games like our teammates didn't pick up the slack on the aggressive side mm -hmm. like usually usually especially at these ranks but honestly in general like people are gonna everyone's like super concerned about the objective so we don't have to be as concerned. If that makes sense. No, especially clan boys. Sense, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. I don't know if you had anything else that you were gonna say. 
No, I was that was it. No, I wasn't gonna okay. say anything else. Gotcha. But yeah, I, I think really good rotation from you. I think that you played it very, very well. Um I love you know, a lot of the very fundamental stuff. I think your spacing and positioning with like your roles and everything are really good. I think you're playing around cover really well. Um, I think you're getting better and better at like making the most out of every situation. So if our crab isn't perfect, I think you're, you know, getting the most value that you can, getting information with the expo shots, uh, you know, making sure you stay alive and positioning yourself to be able to stay alive afterwards. Um, you know, a lot of the fundamental stuff that we've talked about over a while, like a while like you're implementing it like more and more consistent so um i think all of your work from that side of things is definitely uh definitely paying off um but yeah, yeah i think we just keep working on all the different modes of you know knowing how we can be the aggressive and the, the greedy player on the team <laughs> and i think you'll continue to keep keep improving yeah cool 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 yeah no I I definitely think, I mean, um, I definitely regressed for, this is, I, I felt good about this rotation specifically, but there was a, some, I think it's because I had to remember a few things, and I think it's good to go back to the fundamentals, of, or just not the fundamentals, but just like the lessons that you're talking about, about manipulating camera, or uh, getting the most out of position, and um not focusing too hard on objective, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are the mm -hmm. things I'm going to have to focus on. Um, and then just some things I'm trying to work on in, in terms of just like, I know I play my best when I'm able to disengage often. Like I, I'm not super committed to any action I'm taking. So I'm just trying to work on just not being super... I mean, obviously going for plays, but just not focusing super hard on something because then I, I, it just creates too many blind spots for me. Um, yeah. Yeah, sometimes when you overcommit, you end up... And you called it out a lot this uh, rotation, but like you'll end up with your back to the enemy team that are mm -hmm. remaining, um, which it isn't always bad. Like Sometimes you have, like you're forced into those plays, but you know, correct it as much as you like get out of that situation if you find yourself in it as fast as you can um but there's definitely some times where we can avoid it altogether. but i've been super impressed with your like your just general like poking and stuff of like there's just certain times where we like are quickly going for a poke like i think those are the plays that i'm always like the hypest about where like <laughs> we don't even get a pick but we just like poke and like Sometimes we do damage, sometimes we don't do any damage. Occasionally we get picks. But it's like, you you take these like r these plays where there's like almost no risk or very minimal risk, and it's like just upside. Like yes, we're not getting picks, but we're just like, we're getting free poke on the enemy team. Mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. Like it's such a disciplined approach to a lot of it that it's just like, ah, oh, it looks so good. There's that one moment on the enemy team snipe where we're using it as cover on uh, Scorch against the Nautilus. We ended up overextending because we got a little bit antsy and we got melted by the Nautilus. <laughs> there was a quick moment where we used our left, like we rolled left out of cover, shot a couple shots. I think we hit him like once or twice. And then we went back into cover and like, I just love that play. <laughs> if you can just take free value and you can just be in an annoying spot on the map like you don't need to get the picks in those types of situations mm -hmm. so i love that you're setting up those plays and like over time you'll feel better and better about like oh if i'm just like wasting their time for three seconds and they're stuck in their base like that just lets my teammates move forward for free so like i don't need to get the pick because i'm getting value by just existing currently yeah yeah but your, your spacing is really good. You had a lot of like max range, like beaming people in turret mode. So <laughs> I you definitely seem you. a lot more confident, just weapon mechanics and everything. So that's cool to see. That's all you're, you're doing of just getting in reps and, you know, experimenting and poking at those long ranges. Like, there's things where I'm like, I, like, I like the ideas. Cause again, it's like, we're going for a poke where we know it's going to be only upside for us. But somehow you like end up with picks and like how in the world did you know that that was gonna actually i've seen more <laughs> long range like beams in this rotation than i think i've ever seen even watching like jared stream and stuff 
<laughs> like the, no, the spacing I mean, is just like yeah. is is so good. It's so good. I think. You, thank you, thank you. I definitely have noticed my spacing is getting better. I actually, I think, there, yeah, like two rotations ago, I called it out to myself. I was like, well, my spacing is like immaculate right now. <laughs> I don't know what. I, I think it's just putting in the reps of going against each single weapon and being like, okay, this is a space I need to play against this weapon. This is. I still suck versus blasters. That's the one <laughs> class that I. I keep rolling back, and I think I need to. Just, I, it's it's awkward for me. Yeah, but, it, it's definitely one of those things that like you just have to like. You have to know when to commit, but like blasters are such like a an all or nothing kind of matchup. Like there's just yeah. scenarios where like you just have to go in. It's just like you don't yeah. if you don't. If you don't if you don't commit to anything, you eventually just get punished. You just die. Yeah. Yeah. But once you do commit, like then it becomes it's just a like the movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so I think the blaster some of those, always wins. <laughs> some of those range blaster plays, I, I think you were doing like you're doing way better in terms of just like committing to them than I remember in some of the other rotations. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just a matter of like time and just needing the experience against all of them. Like over time, you'll get better and better. Um, but I think you look fine. But it, but yeah, just I think some of that is just like the confidence of you know, me, like just being confident of just like going in against the against the weapon and like mm, yeah. when we're confident with our shot, like that also goes hand in hand with fighting those like that weapon very specifically yeah no that's very true i think that's another thing i've i feel myself getting better at is i mean not not necessarily target prioritization but staying with the target instead of getting split when there's multiple people on me i can remember that expo flick the expo pick that i got that you called out when even though there was like three people looking at me I think in the past, I know, not I think, I know in the past, I definitely would, as soon as I saw multiple people looking at me, I would have started trying to shoot at all of them randomly. Yeah, but, I remember, I think that was like, which, I, it's not, like, I can't even make fun of it, because if I had to play dualies, I'd be, like, I would do the same thing. But yeah, I remember, <laughs> like, our first rotation, like, the first couple times I'd watch you play, like, longer form, like, yeah, that would happen a ton, where... We would just like we'd be between two different targets and we would like just split the difference and we'd shoot yeah. nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, it'll like it hasn't even been that long. Like it's still been like within a season of all this, but I would I would be interested to go back and watch like one of your early rotations and kind of compare it to where you're at now and where you'll be like by the end of the season. I think you'll probably be pretty shocked at the the stark <laughs> difference between then and now even though it hasn't been like a whole lot it of hasn't time, been so. that long but it's been a lot of work though it has been a lot <laughs> it's not been like nothing but it's been it's been a short time too so which yeah. is really ha it's exciting because i mean you know what's gonna happen in one season from now or two seasons from now saying. gotta be yeah. steamrolling through all the the tournaments all those low level tournaments where it's gonna be Gobbling them up, <laughs> easy peasy. Uh, what did we end up uh, at the end of this rotation? I think we were one zero in the set, but uh, what is the? Uh... We went up, right? Yeah. <laughs> at least a little. <laughs> we bit. went up. There was a we lot of went, uh, unfortunate losses that didn't need oh, to necessarily. Man, my powers have gone down. Um. Yeah, we started at. <laughs> I, mean, I, it pretty don't close. Know. <laughs> I don't know i think it's we either the same exactly the same. but yeah there was a couple of rough, <laughs> rough patches which I, I thought like some during those rough patches like that was like probably some of the most solid games that i've seen you play <laughs> yeah it just like feels so bad that like we didn't get rewarded for you just playing super super solid so I wouldn't even feel too bad, but I mean, we didn't climb too much this, this uh, rotation, <laughs> yes. but we almost I think did. Was, we I think almost it was important. 
I think yeah. we learned some important lessons to take with us for the future rotations. Mm-hmm. And when you haven't played clams in a while, like I think that's that's the most you can ask for. Yeah. So, anyway, that's. I feel good. I feel good about this rotation. Yeah. I feel like I learned some things. I have some things to work on. Uh, I was in a good mindset the whole time. I did not get tilted. Um. Yeah. yeah, and I, I think the next time that you play Scorch and Humpback, um, for Humpback, I would definitely try the the far left and far right drops, whether it be the opening or in other times of the match. Uh, just kind of see what happens. Um, but I think for both of those matches, like we can probably uh, look for opportunities to shark like underneath left ledges a little bit more for both of those yeah. maps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not Definitely. not that there's like an obvious play that we're missing, but I think there's opportunities that on average we probably like if we look for it a little bit more often, which I think we do a great job of holding the right side, especially humpback. So not that you shouldn't go for the plays on the right, but I think there's some missing opportunities on like the weaker sides of the map that we can put. Yeah, like we can definitely look for those isolated fights. Yeah, so. I can. Pro yeah, I've like never ever used the rail to go left. In fact, I forget it exists all the time. When, when I, I see someone go left, I'm just like, how'd you even get there? How'd you get yeah. to... Exactly. Yeah, yeah. There is a team I was coaching, and that, that ended up happening. They got flanked by that rail. And I, <laughs> I, I was able to, to teach them. And like I in real time, I got to like see them be like, oh, I didn't even know that was possible. Yeah. So... One of those things that it's a it's a rite of passage of understanding what that rail does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I gotta try that. I actually am very interested to try that next time Hunt that comes around. Yeah. Otherwise, good stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the numbers that we wanted. But like I said, I think those are some of the cleanest games from your ends. Uh, which can we be a little bit more aggressive in certain spots? Surely, but. In terms of like playing defensive, in terms of like the, our ranges and matchups and stuff, that was probably one of the the cleanest rotations that I've seen you play. So definitely nice. a lot to be happy with, especially when you're playing against like blasters, rollers, explo, like very volatile weapons that can punish us a lot. Like we played in a way that like we weren't getting punished. So yeah, yeah, yeah good, good stuff. stuff. Oh, good stuff. I'm almost saying good stuff. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Really do. Really do. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you go and uh, I'm excited for your, your future rotations. Cool. I'm going to we'll, we'll get over that 2K hump here soon enough. We will. I guess we're, already, we will. Our, we're over it in one of the, the modes, but we'll. Uh, We'll We've be been over in every about. mode except Clan Blitz. Clan Blitz, Clan yeah. Blitz is a, but I will say this Clan Blitz rotation we got the, the highest score. I got the highest for sure. Where is it? I think I saw seventeen thirty at some point, but I don't know if that was the highest highest. Oh, maybe I didn't get. Oh, uh, we, we hit We hit seventeen eighty. Damn. And we dropped all the way back down. That's all good. To be fair, that's yeah. like, that's like a, like four, like minus four loss. Like a hundred feels bad, but a three zero basically gets all those points back. Yeah. We started that. Yeah, we started exactly <laughs> where we ended. <laughs> so. Splatoon can be funny like that. Yeah. Well, take it easy. I'm gonna head to bed, but uh, same. I'll uh, I'll talk to you later. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Take it easy. Okay, take it easy. Bye. Later. Later.